Hi all, in this video, let's learn about JavaScript interview question that is finding the second largest element in an array. So let's see that. So if this is a given array, so we need to find the second largest element in this array that is 13 in this case. So usually the general approach to sort out this problems is like one will sort entire array and they will be giving back the last but one element. So this is a general approach to solve this problem. But let's learn about the efficient approach. That is in arrays, in arrays or linked list, if you're trying to solve any of the problem in an efficient way, try to think in terms of the second pointer, okay? Here also we are trying to do the same. So we'll be taking the largest and the second largest as a pointers and we'll try to iterate through this and we'll find the second largest element. So let's discuss about the thought process to solve this in an efficient way. Firstly, we'll add in the, a negative number, big negative number like this in two variables, in largest and in second largest. So this is the first thing we'll do. We'll do. And next, what we are doing, going to do is, we are going to iterate through each and every element in this array. And we find, so if this is a, this is a current element, this element is greater than the largest element, right? The negative element is this, and the current element is greater than the largest element. Then what we do? We'll assign the largest element to the small second largest, and we'll assign the current element to the largest element. Why we are doing this is, in the array, this is the largest element. Now, at this point, this is the largest element. So we are assigning this to the largest element, and the value which is already present in the largest should become the second largest. So that is the reason we'll assign that to the second largest. So if it comes to the, now if you iterate to the 14, second element, so now 14 is the largest element. Now it the current element, this is compared with the largest element. Now in the 12, in the largest element, what you have, 12 you have, 12 is less than 14. It means the current element is greater. So now what we do, this 12 will assign to the second largest because 12 now becomes the second largest and 14 is the current element, which is largest element. So now 14 will be assigned to the largest element. Like this, we are going to iterate. And if we find any of the current element as a largest element, then the element which is present, will assign that to the largest. And the element which is already present in the largest, will assign that to the second largest. This is what we do. For suppose, if you get a number like 13, so now in the next iteration, you will be at the 13th level, right? Okay, 13 is the element. Now, in the largest, we you have 14. In the second largest, you have 12. Now, you have 13. The current element is a 13. If the current element is in between the largest and the second largest, then the current element should be assigned to the second largest. So this is what the thought process to solve this problem. Okay, so if it is the largest element, you will assign that to the largest. If it is greater, the current element is greater than the largest, you will assign the largest to the second largest and current element to the largest. So this is one route. And the second thing is, if you have something, an element, which is in between the largest and the second largest, so then this element should be, the current element should be directly assigned to the second largest element. So if you do like this in single iteration, you, you could able to find out what is the second largest element and this is the efficient approach. So let's see the code part to this in the JavaScript. So also we'll be discussing about the remaining edge cases as well while we are solving this problem. Fine, we are passing the array and it's a length to this method. Now let's discuss. So I'm declaring an index called i. So to iterate in the for loop and let's take a largest as we discussed, I'm taking largest equal to second largest as well. I'm taking two variables here and I'm assigning the same number. So this is the random negative number. So let me explain you why I'm using this random negative number and also don't use zeros here. So usually, generally, uh, most of them does this mistake. They will assign uh, zero here. So we should not assign zero here because zero is also a negative number. So zero is also having there is a chance that zero may be present in the array, which is the second largest element. So that's the reason you should not give the zero values in the array, fine? So I will explain that when that point comes. So the first condition is if the length of the array should be greater than two. So if you're finding the second largest element, the length should be greater than two, right? So if not, so then we need to say this as an invalid input. So now we have covered the edge case of the last one. So if you're passing only one value like 10, what you will be getting, you'll, you need to get something like this. This is an invalid input. 
because you need to find the second largest element. So that's the reason. If you send the length less than one, less than two, then this value would be written. So if not, if not, let's start the loop. So let's start the for loop. So now I am doing for less than length. So now we are trying to iterate over this array. And let's, the first thing, what we have discussed is if the current element. So now let's discuss if the current element is greater than the largest element. So then what we are going to do, the current element is like 12 is greater than the largest element. Yes, now 12 is greater than this largest negative number. Th then what we need to do, we need to assign the largest element to the second largest element because now that becomes the second largest element. And later on in the largest element, we need to assign the current element of the array. So this is what we have discussed in the thought process. The same thing we are doing here. So now like this, you will be iterating through each and every element. So now if you come to the 13, so 13, now if you come to the 12, 12 is the largest and uh, second largest becomes this number. And if you come to the 14th element, 14 becomes the largest element, 12 becomes the second largest element. If you come to the 13th point, what happens? 13 is a value which is in between the largest and the second largest. It means if the current value is in between the largest and the second largest, what we discussed, we need to assign this to the second largest. So that is what we need to do. That we are doing with the help of if else statement and we are verifying whether the given current value should not be equal to, this value should not be equal to, this should not be equal to the largest and also that value should be, this value should be greater than, the current value should be the greater than the second largest. So then what we can do, we can assign the current value to the second largest. We can do this. We can assign the current value to the second largest element like this. So this is what we can do. So once you do all these iterations, you will be getting in, in the second largest element, you will be having the second largest element. So once this is done, so we need to verify one more thing. So if there is no second largest element, so for example, in this for to sort out this edge case, in this case, there is no second largest element. So that is the reason we need to verify if there is no second largest element or not. So that is what we need to verify. So if in the second largest element, if this is still equal to the one which we have assigned at the top. So if it is still equal to this, what does it mean? So we, we don't have any second largest element here. Okay, if this is the value which we have assigned, if the same values exist after we are iterating through all the array elements, it means we don't have any second largest element. That is like this is the case. So in this case, you will not have any second largest element. For this type of scenarios, you need to return back no second largest element. So just we are returning back the strings. So if in case this is not the case, if it is not equal to this value, then just return back the second largest element. So that will be holding the second largest element of the array. So this is a this is a program for the JavaScript. So let's see the output and its edge cases. Okay. So that is the reason I have said not to give the zero value here. If you give zero value in an array, if the zero is the second largest element, then if you compare this with that, you can't state, you can't satisfy this scenario. So that is the reason give any of the random negative number, which consists of more digits like this, random digits, whatever the digits you want, you can give random digits because this value should not be present in the array. So like that, you need to give the initial value and in that same initial value, you need to verify here. Okay, now let's see all these edge cases one after the other. In this case, the second largest element is 13. So let's see the output. Yes, we got it as a 13. So now let's check the second case. In the second case, if you observe in the array, we have 10, 5, 10. So you have two times 10. So now the second largest element becomes five. So let's see. Yes, we got five. So like this, all edge cases we can fulfill. Now in this array, you don't have any second largest element. It means this if statement should be returned back. So let's see. So no second largest element. As we discussed, this return statement was returned. So now the last edge case is like, if you send only one, one value, then what should be returned? So we, we have wrote, this should be written back at this, it, at this point itself. So let's discuss that C, invalid input. So we have covered all the edge cases as well. 
So this is an efficient way to find out the second largest element in the array. Hope you understand the video and the thought process. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.